Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo. I wonder if I can grow a melon pit in my lawn. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so I have this south side of my house over here and it gets a lot of sunlight. I got a pear tree about right over my head here that shades half the yard, but most of this gets good sun all, you know, about, about two thirds of the day. And so, I, uh, I like what I've seen with some of these melon pit ideas where you, you dig a deep hole, you put a bunch of nasty compost down in the bottom of that hole, you mound up over it and you plant you some uh, pumpkins or melons or something like that. I've got myself some moringas and uh, 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 another kind of, kind of a blue gray melon that I'm gonna plant here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out here and dig about a two foot deep hole. This is really hard clay. There's about three inches of topsoil but then below that, it's really hard clay. If you go down far enough, maybe three and a half, four feet, you get down to the original grade, which had some uh, decent soil there. But uh, you know, this is a neighborhood. They took the streets, they threw them up and made paths for the houses. Well, that's what we have here. These areas get good sun. These areas are shaded by this pear tree, but on this side, they get sun most of the day. So this ought to be a good place for these guys. And uh, so I'm gonna grow these, uh, these pumpkins, these squashes here. And I'm just going to let them sprawl out and cover the yard, where, go where they want to go. And we're going to see how well we can do this. You hear those roots popping? That's my fig tree that has not given me fruit for five years. Popping some of those roots will stress that tree just a little bit. Maybe frighten it into thinking it's, uh, it's going to die soon. Maybe then it'll try to fruit. So. Win-win. Now, I have to say, we have some very rich topsoil here. Very rich, very loamy. It's when you start getting down about six inches, you get into this clay. And this clay is in the process of being broken up. But uh, once you get beneath this layer, this black gumbo clay, that's why I named my channel Black Gumbo, this black gumbo clay is virtually unworkable. And you can see it here, it's hard as a rock. It's uh, really fertile stuff, but it's not very well draining at all, as all clays are. You can see this stuff is uh, very gummy, very hard to work. And if I just put water down in this hole, it'll stay there for days and days. This is not well draining. And so I'm gonna put my nasty stuff down in the bottom of this hole, my uh, everything compost down there. And I'm gonna cover it up with the topsoil that came off. I got about, what's that, about five inches of topsoil. And I'll put it down in here. And then we'll plant our, our uh, melon mound kind of on top of this. And I'm gonna build it up. I'm actually gonna cheat a little and build it up with some topsoil and make a hill right here. And so when those roots get down there and find all that goodness down there rotten and decaying, those melons ought to really take off. And I'm gonna send the vines down that way and just let them go where they want. This hole is about 18 inches deep. Got a lot of roots in there. That's not that's not gonna bother me. Some of those roots come from my neighbor's tree. And uh won't hurt to tear those up a little bit. And then this hole over here, I got a little bit deeper. This soil is actually a little bit nicer. Just six feet away. And I'm down about two feet here. And down in the bottom of that, that's where we're gonna put our, our vile compost. Our chicken bones, our chicken scraps, our chicken pickings our compost, our coffee grinds, uh, fridge leftovers, whatever we can find to fill that hole. We'll put about a, I don't know, about half gallon, maybe a gallon down in there. And then we'll, we're gonna cover that up with this topsoil that I've saved. This is some good topsoil here, actually. What I've got here, I've got chicken trimmings, more chicken trimmings. I've got paper towels. I've got more chicken trimmings coffee grounds and kitchen waste and Phoebe likes all of this stuff don't you don't you in addition to that I'm going to place some of my compost over here I've got my uh, greens here and some kitchen waste and beneath that I'm going to dig down and pull up some, some compost beneath this and then I'm going to add a few cups of this nasty fetid fertilizer here just stewing away down in there you don't even want to know what that is there are, there are weeds, 
uh, kitchen scraps, meat, all kinds of nasty stuff in there, dirt, a little bit of compost, and a whole bunch of water, and it's just brewing down there in an anaerobic uh, decomposition cycle. Um, and this stuff is good stuff. You don't want to put this directly on your plants, but it is compost tea, and that really extends your garden. And I've learned about that recently, and I'm, well, I learned about it a long time ago and have been practicing it, but uh, I just started this bucket about two weeks ago, and uh, that's really good stuff. So I'll put some of that in there as well. Alright, it started raining, so I had to take a break and cover that hole up so the dog wouldn't get in there. And uh, I'll show you what I'm going to plant. I've got these Moringa squash. Uh, they're, they're like pumpkins. Real deeply grooved. They're supposed to have real nice flesh. And uh, looking forward to these. Squash, Moringa. I've also got this uh, Jaradale. And it's kind of a greenish, grayish, bluish gourd. And they say when you cut them open they've got a real beautiful uh, salmon colored flesh and so you got a slate gray outside of salmon colored flesh man I hope I get some of both of these the seeds are nice and large we're gonna put a four or five down in the in the ground we've worked up and see if they can't uh, grow some vines all right for this hole I've got some real gnarly compost it's about halfway done but this is kind of a a real nasty compost it's a, from my trash can my stinky compost and this is kind of an anaerobic stuff so I'm gonna put that down in there as well that's some uh, frozen chicken scraps some bones a little bit of fat some uh, chicken waste all right that should do Like I said, there's some pretty good topsoil in here, but there's a lot of clay in it. And so I'm going to take out the biggest chunks of clay, and I'm going to pile up on here some, some better soil. So what I have here is some topsoil and a little bit of leftover potting soil that I'm going to mix in a little bit, just to give some tilt to the soil and to improve it a little bit. just because I can. Just to be sure, because I have a dog, I'm gonna put a little temporary fence around here until I can mulch it, and until those plants get going. So, uh, just to make sure the dog doesn't come and dig all that goodness out of there. Now again, I'm kind of cheating. If I was doing it the, uh, <clears throat> if I was doing this the real kind of permaculture, legit food forest survival garden way, I'd put my soil right back in there and I'd labor and break it up, put some compost in there and work it all together. But I'm fighting thunderstorms here. So uh, cheating like this is something you can do. And uh, we cheat all the time when we make raised beds and we improve our soil. So this is, this will work just fine <laughs> for me. A little more and we'll be done. Six holes, about uh, about two, a little deeper than normal. Like that? A little deeper than that. Well, that's probably good. All right, that's good. We don't have to water that in since it's nice and wet already and it's gonna rain tonight. Moringa. Is that all of them? No, I Kind of like playing cucumbers, huh? What? Kind of like playing cucumbers, huh? Yeah. All right. 
If we don't get some squash out of this, I'm going to be disappointed. All right. <clears throat> I have my anti-corgi fence put around these until they get a little, uh, until they get some vines on them. But yeah, now we got morangas. And over here we've got Jaradale. And I'm real hopeful for these. I don't trip and kill myself. I might live to see them. Yeah, I'm real hopeful for these that uh, we can grow them over here on the south side of the house and send the vines down this way especially and uh, get rid of all those pallets and we'll have a nice place to grow this. If they do well back here, I'll put in another one kind of down that way. And we'll be really into the winter squash. So yeah, brand new, brand new growing site. All right, well now we've got our squash hills in our squash pits as they're sometimes called because we dug a pit we put uh, compostable material down in that pit and we put the kind of compost that you generally don't put in a in a compost pile where animals can get into it where it's going to stink and where your neighbors are going to complain in my area i've got my neighbors you know like 10 feet away from me and i don't want stuff that's really um, super rancid and super vile but you can compost all this stuff chicken bones meat you know all the things they tell you you shouldn't compost you can put those in your compost you're just sometimes gonna get stink now not all the time I put stuff in my compost pile all the time and don't don't get smell because you just bury it deep enough in there and it breaks down but this is an opportunity to, to use that stuff in a deep hole where it's gonna be you know two feet underground and it's gonna break down and supply your plants with uh, a whole lot of, of nutrition and I've seen it demonstrated, I've seen it work before, and I just hope I've got enough sun back there to really grow these, uh, these squash vines. So that's the idea. Check back with us. We'll update whether we succeed or whether we fail. We'll show you the growth of these plants. I'm pretty sure they'll come up. I mean, it's, it's not hard to, to sprout these things, but the, 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 real, the, the, the real test is going to be, do they thrive and do they produce fruit? And so stick with us, and as soon as we've got some progress, we'll show you. We'll update you on our, uh, on our melon pits, on our squash pits, on our pumpkin pits, on our, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we'll update you. So, uh, yeah, subscribe to our, our channel. Like us on Facebook and on Instagram, and check back with us later to see how this experiment's going. So y'all take care. I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>